What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with a pretty huge Destiny 2 news update. And of course this week, it's kicked off with a pretty busy reset. We've got access to the Ruinous Effigy, the beginning of the Exodus quest, and moments of triumph. But in this video, we're going to speak about new exclusive loot you can get in the game, some pretty rare exotic drops, as well as a glitch this week that allows you to complete Master Nightfalls at 750 power. And that means you can farm to your heart's content for masterworking materials, exotics, and all that good stuff. We're also going to get our first look at the Solstice of Heroes armor for this year. Pretty crazy glows that you can get on them, as well as some objectives and additional drops. We'll talk about how rewards are going to work in updated raids, exclusive exotic triumphs as well as fixes, and changes in the update that we had to the game yesterday. So we've got quite a bit to speak about in the video, guys. If you do enjoy this one, a rating below really helps me out. But now, let's get into it. And initially we should mention the Ruinous Effigy. Of course we got the quest yesterday, and now that we have access to the weapon, the thing is a bunch of fun, the transmutation spheres that you can generate by killing enemies. Of course is the main feature of the weapon, and we were kind of curious, how good are these things going to be? But actually, they aren't trivial in terms of the damage that they can put out. Obviously you have the light and heavy attack, the heavy attack consumes all of the energy that the relic has, but it'll put out a massive amount of damage, and then of course you can block and drain nearby enemies. And this has AoE damage for nearby combatants. And then of course we can start to collect the Eyes of Savathun to progress towards the catalyst for the weapon. So all in all, I think it's a pretty fun quest and the weapon itself is really fun as well. Let us know what you guys think about it down below. Of course, additionally, we also got the Exodus Preparation Quest. This is the legendary quest that you can pick up off Zavala. And as we've spoken about before, this is actually the first part in a very long form two part quest. And when you complete the legendary version this week, it allows you to start focusing Assassin and CQC engrams at the Prismatic Recaster, as well as giving you access to the weekly bounties on the destinations that'll be going away. And it means we can farm for awesome rolls on the Ikelos SMG, as well as Sniper Rifle. And then we've got Beringer's Memory and First In Last Out as well. When it comes to the second part of the evacuation quest though, we know this will be an exotic quest. And as well as delivering the story for Season of Arrivals, it'll drop the exotic version of the Traveler's Chosen Sidearm. And interestingly, with this evacuation piece coming from Zavala, this week Arius and Zavala finally had some conversation at the Cradle on Io, so in case you missed that dialogue, here it is. Magnificent. Commander, to what do we owe this pleasure? I've been reading your reports. The darkness's messages are... Are you full? I was going to say obtuse. Come, have a look at the latest. What is it? A gift. This is not what we agreed upon. I don't remember agreeing to anything. You're playing a dangerous game. Good thing you're a dangerous woman. The messages you've decrypted have proved invaluable. Now we know how our enemy thinks. Tell me, what if the pyramids intend to exploit our curiosity? We wield their gift against them. And if it proves unwieldy? Then it will be surrendered to the vanguard for containment. Hmm. And what of the Hive? Savathun will not confront us directly. It is not her way. She thinks too much of herself. And too little of others. Thank you. I look forward to your next report. The drift is on. Pretty cool stuff and obviously the story is going to amp up over the next few weeks. But now, let's move on to some new rewards, secrets, and upcoming content. And initially, DMG said that they missed a patch note, but the dungeon, and he's speaking about the Prophecy Dungeon, is now going to offer a Ghost and Sparrow when you complete specific triumphs. He adds that if you've already completed them, the rewards will pop up in orbit when you sign in. So, if you've already mastered the Prophecy Dungeon, you may have gotten access to the Cottontail Shell. We've got a Dato-themed exotic ghost shell here, but it's going to be a pretty exclusive drop because this one you get specifically for soloing the Prophecy Dungeon. And then additionally, if you can complete the dungeon flawlessly, you can unlock of 10 suns. Both of these drops come via the triumphs that you can unlock, but 10 suns is a Dato themed exotic sparrow. And once again, they are only cosmetic rewards, but they're going to be relatively rare with those requirements. 
Something to shout out right here. Currently, the festering core nightfall has glitched and enemies inside of the nightfall, in all versions as far as I know, will actually appear at 750 power. Of course, we don't have Grandmaster available at this precise moment, but if you want to farm the 1080 Master Nightfall, if you jump into festering core right now, once again, all of the enemies are going to be at 750 power. You still have to account for champions and additional modifiers, but it means that you can farm through the 1080 with enemies capping out at 750. Yet, when you clear it, you still get the master rewards. So it's a really easy way to farm masterwork materials, shards, prisms, and all of those, as well as exotics and other drops that you'll see in the Nightfall. So definitely something to bear in mind. I saw that from Cheese Forever's video initially, although I believe this is a bug that's been around for quite some time, and it's kind of re-emerged with the Festering Core being the featured Nightfall for the week, so definitely don't sleep on that if you're after some easy materials, because potentially Bungie will fix that one pretty quickly. Moments of Triumph is now up for 2020, and we get cool rewards like the Awakened Shell. So once you get 10 Triumphs for 2020, you can unlock the new shell right here, which is a Traveler-themed shell, which is pretty cool. We'll cover more on Moments of Triumph briefly in a moment, but with the update yesterday, we can also now take a look at Solstice of Heroes gear for this year. So initially, let's look at the Solstice Helm for the Titan. Of course, there will be a set for each class, and the Titan one right here is the kind of very basic version of it. But if we look at the promo image, which you can see in the database here as well, we should mention the European aerial zone is in the background. That's going to be coming back for the year by the looks of things. But then additionally, we have the pretty crazy armor glows that we'll see for this year. According to the database at this precise moment, the ornaments will be coming from Eververse. But if we take a look at the Solstice Helm for the Titan again, We've got the ornamented version, although looking at the promo image, it appears that you can get even more ornate versions of these, or potentially if you're charged or something like that, using ability energy, the armors will have additional glows. We've seen things like that in the past. We've got the Solstice Hood for the Warlock, and then the Solstice Mask for the Hunter. And so these armors kind of have a cracked effect, and then we've got the various glows coming through the cracks. Pretty cool stuff, and we can see as well, looking back to one of the helmet objectives, the Magnificent Solstice Helm requires the completion of the Nightfall Ordeal Strike on Master difficulty. And of course, each individual piece is going to have similar objectives which scale up through the different sets. Either way, cool to get a first look at the cosmetic side for the armor. Let us know what you think about those down below, guys. Solstice will be kicking off a little bit later next month. But then there are additional drops. So we have the emblem for acquiring a majestic set of Solstice armor. That's Magnificence in action. Pretty cool looking thing. But as always, with it being a live event in the game, there'll be an additional focus focus around Eververse, and Eververse is going to have a series of holiday and ghost shells with various different hats, apparently, so if that's your thing, you can look out for those in the Eververse store. But also one which has caught the eye of a few players is a potential new Saladin-style hammer swing finisher on the way for Iron Banner. I say for Iron Banner, it's Iron Banner themed, but according to the database, it's listed in the Eververse store, so I'm guessing we'll probably see an Iron Banner during Solstice of Heroes, and that could be a featured item in the store when that happens. Kind of reminiscent of the emote that we had for Iron Banner with the shield a couple of years back. And so that's a bit of an insight into Solstice of Heroes for the year. Of course, the armor really being the main focus. But then Bungie had a bunch of press for Bungie Day as well. And they give us a bit more clarity on how the raids are going to be working with Moments of Triumph this year. So initially, five raids, five havens of villainy that have threatened humanity for years. Immortalize the end of an era and storm the gates of your favorite encounters until you walk out with the gear that you came for. And so during Moments of Triumph, the weekly reward limit has been lifted for Leviathan, Eater of Worlds, Spire of Stars, Crown of Sorrow, and Scourge of the Past. And yes, that does mean that the rewards are completely farmable as far as we know. So if you are missing something like Anarchy from Scourge, it looks like you can just repeatedly farm that checkpoint for chances of the weapon. And of course, that's going to be the same for legendary gear as well. But to clarify in the patch notes, they added that secret chests inside of these raids will continue to have a weekly lockout. But all of the armor from the above listed raids has been updated to use the Season of Arrivals infusion cap. And so Leviathan Prestige armor from year one should see that Season of Arrivals infusion cap, which will be the same thing for Last Wish and Garden of Salvation. So all of those pieces of gear are going to be relevant for a little while which definitely is a good incentive to actually get into those raids and farm. Of course, there are a ton of different triumphs you need for moments this year. And if you are chasing any of the kind of cosmetic items or random drops from raids in year one, some of those triumphs will actually reward them. So if you complete the Leviathan triumph in moments, you'll get the Contender's Ghost Shell and the Leviathan Shaders. The Spire of Stars triumph will offer the luxurious Toast Emote as well as Shaders. And then there's a Shaders triumph for Eater of Worlds, as well as Crown of Sorrow and Scourge of the Past. 
And then of course, with 15 triumphs, you can get the shirt for the year. And if you do the five raids triumph, you can unlock the exclusive raid ring and emblem. Both of those kind of bungee rewards outside of the game for the event this year. So it's good to have some clarity, and of course yesterday we were really focused around the exotic quest and the new stuff there. But over the next few weeks I'd imagine quite a few players will start jumping into those old raids and picking stuff up again. Once again, kind of reminds me of a mini Age of Triumph specifically for those year one raids. And right here we should mention some patch notes from the update yesterday. So a couple of newer things, they've increased Glimmer rewards for Trials of Osiris, that seems to be a general change for the mode. They also fixed a problem where Nightmare Hunts could grant more Season of Arrivals rewards than intended, and so some players were actually farming those for Umbral Engrams and stuff like that. There has been an adjustment there. For Pursuits, they fixed a problem where players had the Guardian Games Quest still in their inventory, and they added, Hunters are still pretty sad about it. Too soon, man. Cheeky patch note commentary. But also they fixed rare crashes with Anarchy, an issue with Vortex Frame Swords where the heavy attack wasn't ending properly over the network, which is basically the bug for the Fallen Guillotine. Various missing collection entries for Season of Arrivals, and a few other quality of life updates in there as well. But for this week, guys, that kind of rounds up everything we have in the game at the moment, as well as some additional stuff that we can see via that update. So let us know how you've got on with the Ruinous Effigy, the quest for that, of course the Catalyst upgrades, or any of the Moments of Triumph stuff so far. The summer looks like it's still going to be relatively busy with content, at least compared to some of the previous seasons we've seen this year. And so be sure to keep it locked here on the channel, guys, so I can keep you posted with all the new content, the news for Beyond Light, as well as guides and stuff when that drops. But if you've enjoyed this video, a rating down below really helps me out. And otherwise, I appreciate you tuning in today, guys. And whatever you do, I hope you have an awesome week.